Hello, in this presentation, we're going to work some test type problems, smaller type problems that could be in a multiple choice type format. So we're going to start off here with this problem. Note that a longer type of problem like this might be useful to actually read the last sentence first, might save some time so we know what it's going to ask for at the end. And then when, when we read through it, it's good to just plot down those numbers that we can then use at a later point. So first, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. We're going to say that to maintain a 10,000, I'm reading this last sentence, to maintain the 10,000 required balance during June, the company must do what? So we can see we're talking about a bank account. I see a bank account here. We want to retain a $10,000 balance. So it sounds like we, we need to basically measure the activity in the bank account. So as we read through it, I'm going to list out kind of the data and punch that into Excel so we might be able to uh, record that information. So company, so I'm going to read it from the top now. <laughs> company is prepared a cash budget for June. Cash budget for June. The company has 11,300 cash at the beginning. So I'm just going to say, all right, beginning cash. And I'm just going to say beginning balance. We're talking about the cash account. So we'll just say the beginning started off with 11,300. 11,300 and anticipates 30,007 in cash receipts. So I'm just going to say, all right, receipts. We think we're going to pull in another 30,700 cash receipts and 30, 35,900 in disbursements. So we're going to have to pay out. This is a budget, of course, disbursements and receipts. We're estimating. I'm just going to abbreviate. We're going to say 35. I'll make it a, I'll make it a negative, negative 35,900. And you'll note that I, I underline that with the underline here already. That cell's been underlined. Okay, and let's see what else we have. The company has has an agreement with the bank to maintain a minimum balance. So I'm just going to note that over here. Minimum balance. We want a minimum balance in our checking account of 10000 That's like our cushion. We don't want to go below there. We're told our bank, hey, if we go below 10, then give us an automatic loan because we need 10 in there at any given time in case of emergency. We currently have a loan to the bank of uh, May 31st, 15,000. All right, so I'm just going to note that on the side. So now we need to read that last sentence again. To maintain the 10,000 required balance during June, the company must do what? Well, let's see where we are at the ending balance as of now. We said that we, I'm just going to sum these up. We had a beginning balance of 11.3 plus receipts of 37. That's what we think is going to happen, at least in disbursements of 35.9. So if we sum that up equals the sum of uh, i'm going to say this plus this minus this that's the sum of these last one being a negative number we say enter uh, we get the 6001 of course all we did was in a calculator say 113 plus 30007 minus the 359 gives us the 61 now we see that that is below <laughs> 10000 right that's below 10000 that's our minimum balance so we need a minimum of 10000 so what's the bank going to do it's going to increase our loan then. So I'm going to underline this and I'm going to say we need then a loan equaling 10,000 minus what's currently in there, the 6-1. That means we need another 3-9. So what's going to happen? What's going to be, you know, in the answers when we look at a multiple choice question? We're going to have to get a loan. We're going to have to increase the loan for this 3-9. What's that going to do to our total loan? Because the current loan balance happens to be this. 15 so that will increase our balance to it's going to increase it by the 39 and we currently have a balance of 15 so the answer key could say we need to increase the loan by 39 the answer key uh, uh another type of variation of this problem might say that well what's going to be the loan balance after uh this month is over and that would be 18 9. 
All right, we have the next one here. Once again, I'm gonna to try to read that last line and see if I can get some information before reading the entire thing. So the last line here says, starting here, compute the projected sales expense to be reported on the selling expense budget for the manager for the month ended June 30th. So we're gonna keep that in mind as we read through it. So I'm gonna start from the top now. Company sells a product for $700. So unit price is gonna be 700. I'll just log that in. Units sales for May. So we're gonna say May, and I'm gonna put a header here, May, and we'll say unit sales. Unit sales for May are gonna be 400. And we just know, we already know that we have this unit price. So I'm gonna put that down here. And I'm gonna say, okay, well the unit price is gonna be down here. And you could retype this in. I know I'm formatting and formatting is half the, half the issue, whether you do it by hand or in Excel. So we're gonna put it and try to put it in this kind of grid type format. So we're gonna say, all right, well, unit sales are here. The unit price is here. So that's what we have for May so far, 400. And uh, sales are expected to increase uh, the prior year months by 3%. So we know that we're looking for, if we look in the answer, we're looking for June. So we have May here and then we have June. So we need to think about, okay, well, what's gonna happen to June then based on this is that's where we want to go. I'm gonna format paint this and go here. And we know that the, the unit sales are gonna increase by 3%. A couple ways we can calculate that. We're gonna say that uh, unit sales are 400. So for May unit sales, we have 400 and it's gonna increase by 3%. So we could say, okay, well, the increase is gonna be 3%. I'm gonna put 0.03. And I'm going to go back on that cell. We're going to go to the home tab, alignment. And just remember, if I add decimals, 3% is 0.03. If we move this, if we move the decimal over, or we can make it a percent, 3%. And then if we multiply that out, we're going to say, all right, well, the increase then is 4,000 times 3%. It's going to increase by 12. So the increase is going to be by 12. So this is the increase. I'll say increase percent. And this is actually the actual increase in dollars. And that's going to be the 12. So note that we might do that a bit more quickly by saying, all right, well, if it's 400 and it's going to increase by 3%, instead of putting 3%, we might just put 100% plus 3% is 1.03. So note, we can do this a lot in one calculation. This is worth noting by saying 1.03, 103% of the original number means that it's going to go to 412. R you know, rather than taking this 412 and saying, What's the new sales going to be? 400 plus 12. We can do that with one calculation by saying 400 times 1.03, 103%. That'll give us that 412. So if I did that over, over here again, what we're doing is we're saying, I'm taking this 400 times 1.03, 103%. 1.03, that gives us the, the uh, 412 times the 700 unit price. So, so we don't really need to calculate May, but if we wanted to, we can say, okay, May is 400 units times 700 per unit. Enter, that comes out to 280 sales. And then June is going to go up to 214, uh, 412 units times 700 per unit. And that gives us the 288.4. Now, what we're, what we're looking for, this is the sales. And what we're looking for is the the selling expenses. So they, they're telling us that the selling expenses is 3% of sales. We have commission, commission rate is gonna be 3%. So once again, that's point or 2%, sorry, it's 2%, 0.02. So I'm gonna go back on there on that 0.02. I'm gonna go to the home tab. We're gonna go to the uh, numbers group. And again, I could increase the decimals. 0.02 is the same as if I say the percent sign, 2%. And that means that the commission will be the sales of 288.4 times 2% times 0.02 in the calculator. And that'll give us the commission of this 5768. We also pay a salary. So we have a salary, a sales salary to the sales manager of 3000. Therefore, the total sales then would be uh, the selling expense would be the commission, 5768, plus the salary that we pay them, and that will give us the 8768 for the uh, selling expenses. So note that the, the main issue with this type of, of problem is to basically format 
the the information put it down in a format that works uh, obviously in Excel it's nice because you can move things around if you don't have Excel then you need to get uh, used to how to format different types of problems so you can do it efficiently by hand it would be the same type of thing graph like this but you want to be able to efficiently do that uh, by hand all right next one here once again I'm gonna to try to start off by reading that last line first to see if we can get some information on what needs to be done before we read through the entire thing so the last line begins right here with budgeted purchases of product a for the year would be so we need to find out what we're, what the budgeted purchases of A will be. So keep that in mind as we read through the entire thing here. Starting from the top, we have the sales budget for uh, Corp shows 20,200 units of product A and 20,200 units of product B are going to be sold for prices of $10.20 and $12.20 respectively. The desired ending inventory of product A is 30% higher than its beginning inventory uh, of 2,200 units. The beginning inventory of product B is 2,700 units. The desired in inventory is 3,200. Okay, so we're going to try to focus in on product A. So we need to figure out what we need to purchase. Now, when we think about what we need to purchase, we have to start off that, that conversation out with how much do we think we're going to sell? How much do we think we're going to sell of product A throughout the year? So projected sales of product A, because that's what we're focusing on here, is 20,200 units. 20,200. So that's how much we need. 20,200 units. Now, that if if that was it, if we were starting from nowhere, that's how much that's how much we would have to basically purchase or produce if we wanted to sell that much. But this is not our first year for one which means that we have beginning inventory already so we don't have to have the whole 20,200 because we already have some in beginning inventory and it's also true that we want a basically a cushion at the end so we want a desired ending inventory and so so we want something at the end and what will that desired ending inventory be now they're going to they're going to give us the beginning number we're, that's what we'll typically know and then we're going to basically calculate off that what the desired ending is so they tell us that here the desired ending inventory of product a is 30 percent higher than its beginning inventory so i'm going to do that in a separate calculation we're going to say the beginning inventory is uh 2200 2200 and we want it to be 30% higher because it's going to be a 30% higher for the ending inventory. So that would be 0.3, 30%. Or if we go to the home tab, I'm going to add some decimals. It's 0.3. That would be 30%. Or if we hit the percent sign, 30%. Same thing. That means that we want an increase of 2,200 times 30%. And that will give us the increase of 660. That's the amount of the increase. So how, what's the ending balance going to be then? We, we want it to be this 2,200 plus the increase, the 30% increase of 660. Now, once again, we could do that quicker. We could do that quicker. We could say, okay, the beginning inventory is 2,200 2,200 times not 30%, but 100 plus 30%, 1.3, 1.3. And if we go to the home tab numbers and we add decimals, it's 1.30 1.3 is the same as if we make it a percent the 130 percent and we do that with one calculation then we're going to just say okay i want this 2200 times the original 100 plus the 30 130 percent and that will bring us to the uh 2860. so if we were starting at a point of zero we don't have any we don't have any inventory we would need to produce the projected sales in units 20,200. And we would have to produce enough to have our desired ending inventory, which in this case happens to be the beginning inventory. I'm just going to recalculate it here. 2,200 uh, 2, times 1.3, 130%. Enter. So there's, there's that. Okay, and then that's what we would have if we didn't have something in there already. But we already have a beginning balance. We already have a beginning balance and we're going to subtract that out. So if we didn't have any beginning balance, we would have to have the 20,200 plus this much for a cushion at the end. But there's already something in there in the beginning. So we're going to say minus the 2,200 that's in there at the beginning. So if we sum that up, then we're going to say what we need to produce then is going to be this 20,002 plus the, what we want at the end minus what's already in there. And that will be the 20,860. If we did that in a calculator, all we're doing there would be, of course, 
taking the 20,200 plus the 2860 minus the 2200, giving us the 20,860.